Hello, my name is senior member Joseph Penn. I'm with the 186 Squad Squadron and their flight simulation team. In this tutorial, I'll be speaking about the transition for FSX users from the Cessna 172 to the Mooney Bravo to complete your candidate rating. This aircraft will be used if you're using FSX at home or just using the squadron computers to complete your training for FSX, complete your next rating after your private. If <laughs> in this training, you will be taking the role of a air taxi pilot, primary flying IFR flights in accordance with the curriculum. And this is the aircraft you'll be doing it at. As you've noticed, this is the version of the Mooney Bravo without a G1000 glass cockpit in it, as currently our program does not support the use of glass cockpits or GPS navigation. The Mooney Bravo is a complex aircraft. This means that the aircraft has not just a flaps, but flaps, a constant speed propeller, and lastly, retractable landing gear. This is the most important detail on this aircraft, I would argue, out of all of them, is the implementation, implementation of landing gear, as forgetting to use that landing gear will result in immediate destruction of the airframe. As you can see, the cockpit's uh, largely similar to the Cessna 172, with a few major differences in the six-pack, which has now become an eight-pack, as you have multiple OBS systems, multiple horizontal situation indicators. Over here, you see your primary horizontal situation indicator. This is a bit different in the Cessna 172, as instead of a swinging line, you have a omnibearing selector that is actually selecting a line on a map. This works. A, this is a bit of a better system, in my opinion, compared to the Cessna 172, and is implemented in many Garmin avionics systems and Avidyne systems because of just its easier use. Currently I'm tuned to the Hartford VOR and as I select my radicals, as you can see the line moves, but I can actually create a line and figure out what angle I'm going to fly in terms of radials towards or away from the VOR. In addition to this, the to from indicator doesn't say the words to or from, but rather has a arrow pointing towards that. If you're if it's pointing in the direction of the arrow you're heading to, opposite is away. The heading bug is very similar. You can see on the heading bug that you just spin this knob here, and you see the same orange feature of a bug moving around here with the situation indicator. The Alpilot is much stronger than this aircraft. Well, similar, but just as strong, and the aircraft has much more engine power to use. As you can see here is your fuel flow in gallons per hour. That's your fuel flow. Tack and your manifold pressure gauge. That's all determined by how you manage your propeller which is the blue knob. Red is still the mixture, green still the black is still the throttle. This aircraft park brake is down here, and the aircraft, unlike the Cessna 172, also has a cowl flap. Cowl flaps are used for additional uh, cooling inside the engine compartment during takeoff, and is commonly opened to improve cooling. As you can see here, your oil temperatures and your fuel pressure and your outside air temperature. The altimeter is very similar to the Cessna 172, with the exception of adding a 10,000 hand. Tip B to set ourselves to the current barometric pressure outside in this fictional scenario. This is your nav GPS mode switch. This should normally not be in GPS mode in our flights until you reach the candidate rating. Sorry, start your training for first officer and also complete your first officer rating. Over here is the same radio stack you normally would find in the Cessna 172. This is, of course, your DME equipment right here. Showing seven miles away from Hartford. Gear knob is here. Of course, that can be operated with the G key. Currently, the aircraft is configured to take a full prop and full mixture, fully rich with the. F with the Throttle slightly out and one and no flaps. One extra flaps during the winters, during the summer rather, is usually helpful for takeoff performance. But this isn't needed as we're currently in pretty cold temperatures as we go into winter. Yeah. Let's take a look at the outside of the airplane. Of 
We'll move the knee board out of the way for just a moment. This is the outside of the moving Bravo. You can see that it's got some very cool slopes and uh, generally it's a much sleeker airplane with a bigger nose cowling showcasing its larger engine. If we go into the aircraft reference, you can see the differences. The higher maneuver speed, higher cruising speeds, higher never exceed speeds, and really everything's pretty different and in addition to a higher max weight flaps up stalling speed. And in landing configuration, the stalling speed is about the same, a little bit faster. Of course, takeoffs are generally still by feel in these general aviation airplanes, these small aircraft. And of course, your checklist will still be located in the same spots. This is an FSX default aircraft. And cowl flaps are to be opened on takeoff in general. Let's take a brief flight out in this aircraft. We'll show you how to intercept the radio and how to operate the various systems. We'll go hit the Hartford VOR and uh, return and do a traffic pattern and land. Once the, the view is to your liking, we'll release the parking brake on this aircraft and begin to add power. Once the cow flaps are open, it's halfway. Cow flaps open. Look at the power, you see the fuel flow going up as manifold pressure builds and RPM builds in the engine. Your speed's alive, right around 60 65 knots is the best rotation speed in this aircraft, and we'll take it off the ground. Sorry, more like 7580. We'll pop it off. Rather, it should be right around 60. It depends on your weight and your passengers, of course. And we'll continue our climb out. Okay, as you can see here, gear must be up before 106 knots. And we're going to climb out a bit more aggressively to reduce our airspeed. To keep it within the, re the aberration of gear down. Clear of our obstacles now. Gear can come up. Press the G key to retract the landing gear, and we can always take a look outside to watch the very last of it pulling up. Cow flaps are still open. We're still trying to anticipate that heat. Now we can go much faster, climb faster, cruise faster, as the drag from the landing gear is taken away. Passing now through 1,000 feet, and around 2,000, before we start making our turns towards the Hartford VOR. We're going to intercept Hartford on the 180 radial, kind of just set our our new bearing and our heading bug. So you continue upwards and select an altitude of 2,000 feet for this demonstration. See how much higher the climb out speed is in this airplane, right around uh, 110 knots compared to the usual about 90 knots that you'd have in the 80, 90 knots you'd have in the Cessna 172. And there we go. We'll be leveling off right around 2,000 feet. We'll pull a little bit of power out, but we'll leave the prop in. And we'll begin our some heading adjustments before uh, intercepting the radio and seeing how it works on 
a display such as this one. I'm going to purposefully blow through the radio here. And then demonstrate the radio intercept in this aircraft. Here's a brainer behind us in our passenger seats for our hypothetical passengers. See a much higher speed for 140 knots. Indicated. As you can see also we have prop de-icer in this aircraft as well. We do have other systems to be used during the winter. Alright, pretty far away. Let's make a heading change. Right around 210 for a 30 degree or so intercept of the 180 radial. So we can get a little more aggressive. We'll go to two two or two three zero. In the left hand side, you can actually see your true airspeed using a correction for the temperature used by this knob. And that would be the white indication on the black indication on the black side is your indicated airspeed rather than true. And you can see we're now getting much closer. We'll turn on our navigation hold. In the line, you can see, similar to the kind of stick-based OBS we've seen before, it's getting closer, that line being the radio. When the line is centered between the arrow and the end of the line, you're on the radio. Of course, the pickup of the radio is a little more perfect, well, a lot more perfect in Microsoft Flight Simulator than X-Plane. You can see just how easy it is to understand and intercept radials in this aircraft and navigate that way. Our right inside still has all of your useful information. So you continue to travel towards the Hartford VOR. And you can see I can get the tutorials done much quicker now as I can fly much, much faster.
current ground speed over 151 knots. You can really make these trips very quick in this airplane. And next we'll begin our approach down back into Hartford. Do a touch and go, and a traffic pattern. Okay. Nav hold's going to come off. Cloud pilot's going to come off. And we'll start making a turn. Right around 30 degrees. Right there. You can see also a turn coordinator down bottom. Very valuable addition for when you're hand flying IFR. Compared to the Cessna 172, which in a lot of cases doesn't always have one to test if you're coordinated or not. We'll bring it in over the river for the runway. As we approach the uh, airfield, get to kind of our equivalent while we enter this base of a midfield downwind, we'll perform our gump check. Coming in very quickly. We don't really want that. Pull the power way back. That's our gear warning. As you hear our, when we pull out a lot of throttle, you're kind of warning us about having too much gear in. So let's slow way down as you continue to descend towards Hartford. Need to be slower. Because we cannot extend the gear until 106 knots. And if we don't extend the gear, we don't land. And see, the aircraft doesn't really like to be at low speeds. It's a lot less stable. It requires a lot of back pressure and a lot of upward trim. And as we're now under kind of a safe range of flaps, we'll extend our, our notch of flaps. Under 106 knots, gear down. And start looking for that runway again. Just right here. Well, this is definitely not a perfect pattern. It gets you the idea of how you need to manage this aircraft's speed. And if you're like, if you do what I did, and you let it get away from you, the aircraft will really be punishing you. Drop some more flaps. Don't let the power take us away. Bring it in for a nice, easy landing. Let's go intercept the center line over the river. Get this nice airplane on the ground. See, really is not a big fan of low speed flight, especially when it's heavy like this. Very low. Definitely something to watch for. We'll bring it in nice and easy. Touchdown target, flare on the ground and brakes. Pops up. And taxi back.
One more taxiway. That's a bit of a hybrid of the runway. Do the bad takeoff performance last time. What we're gonna do is use one notch of flaps to help us get off. You can see we're in the lowest part of our t we're in our takeoff range here in terms of trip. We'll get out of here and do one quick lap around and bring it in again. It's time for a better landing. Grab the obstacles, gear up. Bring out the flaps. Just got some speed now. Keep climbing right around 800 feet before making the turn. Right, 30 degree bank, keep the back pressure, maintain the climb. At 50 feet away from 1,000 feet, pulling back power, leveling off, killing that vertical speed, keeping in the turn. Turn about 90 degrees now. We will leave, we have, and we'll check. See if we need to continue the turn. Alright, I've turned a little too far, and that's okay though. Visibility is kind of poor out of this aircraft. At least in my opinion. With the low wings, it's a lot harder to see the runway. And we dropped. We'll fly now parallel to the runway. Continue towards back towards Brainerd. Just remember the aircraft also does have a speed brake. We'll demonstrate that on the way in. If you have a lot of speed, we'll get definitely get a chance to demonstrate it. Not something you normally expect in an aircraft like this. Okay, getting ready for a base turn. 
We'll start slowing our way down. We'll go to our F11 view and demonstrate the speed brake function. As you can see, they pop up out of the wings. Slow you way down. So you can get well within gear range. Use the gear to give you some more drag. Track the speed brake. Gear down. A little more power to compensate. Continue to bring the aircraft in. Of course, speed brakes will also kill your lift. But when this aircraft is heavy, it is very difficult to complete an approach. You'll find yourself using a lot of power to compensate. And it's generally not, does not play nice. Like the Cessna does. You can see I'm really kind of fighting the airplane on pitch as we bring it in. Still even a bit too low, even with the extra power and the extra back pressure. We'll get it in nice and safe. Still as we flaps all the way down. We'll get it in nice and fine. After all, you guys will probably end up with a lot more hours in this airplane than I will. We'll be very, very good at landing it. Much, much better than me. There we go. Pappy's one red, one white. And we'll bring it on in. Start reducing the power. Taking constant kind of picture out of here in terms of how high the touchdown zone indicators on the runway, the touchdown zone markings are relative to the windscreen. We'll keep taking right, we're a little low, we'll give it a little more power. Pretty low, more power. Alright, constant picture. Slow way, way down. Make sure you don't stall. Touchdown zone markings power out. A little rough, but acceptable. On the brakes, slow it down if you want. A little bit of speed brake. Feel like the airliners. And off that runway. Hope this gave you a good indication of how this aircraft works the Muni Bravo and uh, see you in a few more tutorials for aircraft for you candidate